Hello and welcome to the video I never thought I would have to make, but apparently the developer decided to change the controls of the robot, and so now my beautiful code solution, optimized code, does not work, and neither does the video I made for the maze. So here we are. Now we got just a simple turn left and turn right, and these directions work off of the robot's own like personal left and right rather than before where we had cardinal directions and we had to keep track of our bearing and use modulo 4 uh, you know to turn now it's just 0 and 2 and uh, 1 for moving forward so yeah let's do it we're gonna be doing the same logic where we just follow the left hand wall and but now it's just way easier so I'm going to make some constants, so there's 2, 16, uh, I don't think I ever use register 3 like pulling values, so I'll just do load register 4, 32, 540, yeah that'll be it. So we're going to have 0, we're just going to leave the 0 in register 4 and use that for the turning left. So I'll make a little note to myself to make sure I don't overwrite it. And I'll put 2 into register 5 for turning right. Move 5, register 5. And we're going to put 1, our move forward command, into register 2 because we're also going to use that for uh, subtraction. And the reason we need that is because when the robot is looking at a wall, we see we get a 1 as our input. Um, but if we're looking at the door, we get a 3. So both of those numbers are positive and we don't really have any logic to differentiate those two as they are, at least not in a simple way. I believe you can do some sort of modulo, uh, or not modulo, but like one of the ands or ors. But a much simpler solution is to just subtract one from the input, and then in that case, when you're looking at a wall, it's actually a zero, and the door will be two, which is just greater than zero. So every time we like take the input to see what we're looking at, we just subtract 1. So forward and sub in register 2. All right, now we're going to start our logic for finding an open spot. We're just going to turn right until we find one. So find open. We'll move the input to register 2 oh register 1 I'm sorry because we got the 1 and 2 subtract and now if it is equal to 0 that means if we're looking at the wall then we want to turn right so we'll actually start this with a right turn so move where's the right move is 5 Load register 5, output. Okay, so now if it's equal to 0, we jump back. Jump equal to 0. So now if I step through this, we should get three right turns. 1, 2, 3. All right, so now at the next iteration, this will evaluate false and we'll keep stepping on. And in that case, we create our move loop. So we start by moving forward. So load register 2 out. And now we're going to turn to the left and that's how we follow the left hand wall. So every time we move forward we check left to see if there's an opening there. So move left is 4, load register 4 out. Then we take the input move in to register 1 subtract. Now if it is equal to zero that means we're looking at a wall and so we want to jump back to our find the open spot. 
and that'll just make us turn back to the right to like undo the turn we did and then we'll be looking at an open spot again and move forward so if it is find open jump equal to zero uh, okay and then if it's not open then we jump back to here so I mean if it is open then we jump back to here or where in, the, in, in that case we move forward so move jump and all right this is almost enough but if we play this he'll he'll, he'll walk the maze but there's nothing here to open the door so we're just going to put that at the beginning of our move label um so every time we move forward we just try opening the door and that ends up being faster than if we implemented some sort of logic to see if we're looking at a door because this is just, oh wait, we need to put a four. We'll just put it in register zero and then move out. Uh, Cause that's our use action. Um, these two commands is faster than any sort of logic you can implement. That that logic will guaranteed be more than two lines and then just take more time itself. So I'll let that play and uh, prove that it works. But there is an optimization we can make that is very convenient for us. And I'll show you that after we're done here. All right, there we go. Turns out that the beginning, the beginning of our find open label here is at address four. And I explained in a previous video how this is actually two lines and that you can actually separate these like so. And it works all the same. So when it steps to this line, it puts the value, the numerical value of this label's address into register zero. I can show it to you real quick. All right, so find open starts at address four. When we step into it, now we see that there's a four in register zero. And that's exactly the same thing we're doing here, except we're just not using a label. So what we can do is we can get rid of this four. And we can just take this find open label because that has a value of four and put it at the beginning of our move label. And so now the only thing that's really different is instead of putting the value immediately before the uh, this condition we're just putting it before like way before it and the data is still all the same it's just you know one less command uh, so yeah now one thing to note is that the game is kind of bugged right now you see these address numbers they're not accurate <laughs> they're not next to uh, the actual lines so I found that if you just like scroll, then it resets. Uh, so yeah, that is a pretty good optimization. I think we can change this more because we don't actually need this label. What we can just do is get rid of it. And where it says find open now, we just replace with a four instead. Um, but now I'm just trying to think. So I think we can get rid of this as well. And where it says move, we can just replace with that nine. Okay, let me let me try to find something else. I I vaguely remember something better. So just give me a second. All right, so I found it. Um, what we can do is take this four, because now we've we've broken free from like binding ourselves to address labels or label addresses so no matter how many commands we have in front of this uh, like when we had the label here and we just put like x here and x here no matter what we put in front of this 
it's going to change like the address of label X and you know that's uh, might be a limitation so what we can do instead oops, we can like breaking free from it allows us to put this four at the beginning of this block um, but we need to change this or we need to update it, scroll it because the numbers were wrong. Change this to five. So now, when this is still that sort of loop, um, but we have five in our register zero now. So when we jump equal to zero, it's going to this address. But this still works because the four is our use door command, and it's also the address that we jump to in this condition. And in that case, it just jumps back to this five. And so that four is overwritten with the new, with the actual address label. And you know, it's, it's a very small optimization because the only effect it has is when you're, when you're staying in this loop. And it's just a, a tiny, tiny bit faster. Uh, but yeah. I hope that made sense as far as, you know, manually setting the address uh, of your loop. Um, but yeah, that's a fun little workaround optimization. So I hope this was useful to you. I'll paste this code in the comments if you just want to copy paste it. And thank you for watching.